you acknowledge any failures in your promise to deliver an honest and transparent government? I think the discussions we're having this morning, what we've seen in the testimony, our participation in, in not just the Justice Committee process, but also uh, the Ethics Commissioner process, uh, is something that Canadians can look to to see that we do uh, take very seriously the need to continue uh, to give Canadians confidence uh, in their institutions and, indeed, in the rule of law. We're at a time where Canadians are worried about uh, the, what they see in the news from around the world, uh, the cynicism around our institutions, the polarization in our politics, and being able to demonstrate that we continue to defend our institutions despite um, internal challenges is something that I think Canadians can, uh, can deeply be reassured by. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Merci Monsieur le Premier ministre. Merci tout le monde. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, everyone. And with that, the Prime Minister has finished speaking at the National Press Theatre. So uh, let's uh, come back to Michel Boyer from CTV News. Okay, Michel, uh, a lot of people are wondering what they were going to hear. We know that it was definitely not an apology. Uh, there was no. no breakdown in Canada's rule of law. There were no failings by the government here. There was perhaps an erosion of trust, and uh, the Prime Minister summoned the ghost of Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Why, why did he speak today? What exactly did he say? Well, I think we also needed to hear the version of the Prime Minister. Ultimately, he is the one responsible. It's not just Jerry Butts, who some called the most powerful unelected man uh, this, uh, in the country. But we needed to hear from the PM himself because uh, this is affecting the Liberals. This is affecting the Liberal brand. And Justin Trudeau needed to set the record straight, at least uh, from his own mouth. But you're right. No, no apology. Uh, he did say, uh, he did concede, yes, there was that erosion of trust. Uh, retrospectively, he would have done things a little differently, particularly when, it talks, when he talks about the cabinet shuffle. Um, but he didn't necessarily get into any details as to why, when they were talking about the shuffle, which don't forget, which is why we're even talking about this in the first place, why, when Jody Wilson-Raybould uh, did not accept the Indigenous services, why not just really uh, place her back? He didn't get into any of the details, you know, about it, really... Uh, why he thought about removing her from there in the first place if she was doing an okay job. I, I do think uh, that uh, one, one thing that perhaps did stick was he referred to uh, every interaction uh, regarding SNC-Lavalin, uh, which had been described as undue pressure. Uh, uh, he wanted to mm -hmm. reframe as conversations among colleagues. Um, he, they, they, they saw things differently. He kept going back to this notion of erosion of trust. Uh, he, he spoke a bit about... Uh, leadership, his leadership style, uh, how it's uh, it's very open. He wanted essentially an open door policy, uh, expecting people to walk through that door to come talk to him if he had problems. And then it sort of sounded like he was shifting the blame back to her that she didn't come to him with with problems. So so I, again, I'm I'm still yeah. trying to figure out um, what what what. What we heard that was new today and why he needed to speak if there was going to be no apology, if there was going to be no admission of perhaps procedural problems uh, within the PMO, uh, communication problems. Um, so I, I really don't, I, I'm, I'm struggling to, to figure out what we heard today. You know, let me, it's, this is what it sounds like to me. It sounds like Justin Trudeau has a perception of how his office works. There are many layers to the prime minister's office. There are hundreds of people that support all of those operations. I'm not going to get into that. But, you know, the PM's at the top. Uh, and then it sounds like he, he thinks that, you know, any minister can just waltz in, talk to him at any time. Uh, but there, were, uh, there are other layers that perhaps maybe Jody Wilson-Raybould felt that she could not go to the prime minister with uh, directly. Maybe she felt like because Justin Trudeau had said, if you're talking to Jerry Butts, it's like you're talking to me, that going to Jerry was enough. Uh, and then we heard yesterday's testimony. So I don't know necessarily why he chose not to apologize. Um, I think profound, like fundamentally, uh, Justin Trudeau and everybody in the PMO thinks that they were motivated. Their intent behind these conversations uh, was well-meaning, that they were caring about jobs. I believe them when they say that. Uh, but they, and they also felt like if Jody Wilson-Raybould really felt like her decision was final, she should have put that in writing. Uh, and, and that would have been the end of that, but that didn't happen. So, yeah, you're right, shifting the blame back to Jody Wilson-Raybould. He is saying that one of the lessons here is that he learned something new 
every day. Uh, and part of learning is mm -hmm. uh, taking steps to improve, uh, including seeking external expert opinions and a review on, as we were talking about before, that dual role uh, that is uh, those two hats worn by the Attorney General and the Justice Minister. Perhaps there right. needs to be something done to, to, to separate these, those two, keep one in cabinet and one out. Um, but I think a lot of Canadians are probably going to find it strange that on a day that we were expecting some sort of either apology or act of contrition, that there was no apology but an announcement of a concrete apology coming later today in Canada's north. Um, and almost a look of defiance in his eye when asked by a journalist, are you apologizing for anything today? And he said, well, I, there, is, uh, there is an Inuit apology coming later today. So um, if this was a PR uh, and a perception problem before, I don't know mm -hmm. that it's any less of one now. You know, I think that he really wants Canadians to look at the two stories and say, does this make sense? Do you understand why we were going to Jody Wilson-Raybould talking to her about this deferred prosecution agreement. By the way, it's not uh, SNC getting off scot-free. It would be like billions of dollars in fines and the ability to continue uh, operating uh, w with new people. Um, and I think he wants, he's just putting it out there and he wants Canadians to, to make the decision uh, on their own. You know, I didn't think we were going to get a message of contrition after I heard Jerry Butts' testimony, because uh, he was poised, he was collected, he was measured, as was Jody Wilson-Raybould, uh, but he, lay out, he laid out their intent there, uh, and they don't believe that they did anything wrong. They don't think there's anything wrong with going to the Attorney General and saying, you know, well, this is important to us because it affects a lot of Canadians. All right, CTV News is Michelle Boyer. Thanks again for spending your morning with us. We appreciate it.